What's up, guys? Welcome to episode six, season five, I believe. Um, guys, we've got a special episode today for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is we're in Costa Rica, so we have traveling mics. Hopefully the audio is good. Hopefully the, uh, the video is even better. Um, the only problem is use a clip on, so if they come off, just let, uh, let us know. Mike, Spanish Mike, Mike Gonzalez, how's the weather in Texas? And why you did not respond to my text if you're the backup for Leah? Because we're having technical difficulties. So, guys, I want to give a quick shout out to Vashek in Czech Republic. Uh, he watches religiously. Recently, he used the Urigatame. This as a quick submission to win two matches back to back at the European Championships. But let's get to our show. So, guys, as you know, the format. Um, Live questions always have priority, but we always start with something. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce you. Guys, this is one of my favorite training partners, Eugene Thong, a good black belt from Henzo's Academy. People don't understand how deep the, 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 the instructor core and, and, and the, the level, well, maybe some do, are run at Henzo's. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really high level room. Anyways. So guys, just so you know, if we, by the way, we saw capuchin monkeys yesterday. If we see monkeys or parrots or toucan while we're filming, we're gonna break off. I'm gonna try to get, we're gonna try to chase them down with the camera. So the question that, that we had is, um, how do you open a, a, a closed guard, okay? So we start with that. I tend to use two methods. Um, the methods uh, that I use, one is a log splitter and the other one is actually my favorite. So we're gonna start with the log splitter and then we're gonna go over kind of the method that I prefer to use. The only thing is Eugene's left knee, well, so is my own. So I have to go on, on my left side, which is my bad knee, but we're gonna try to make it good. It's a chance to do a few more reps on my bad side. And it's not just bad because it's injured, it's bad because passing with my right leg forward is more, more dominant side, but let's start with the log splitter. Guys, it's being called the log splitter for obvious reason. So um, let's look at first, um, how do you stand up? So a lot of times the guy on the bottom is obviously gonna try to get grips and you need to deal with them, you need to strip them, you need to, you know, however you strip them. So that may take, you know, a few seconds. We're gonna focus on standing up. By the, by the way, guys, you're probably hearing road noise. So we're on top floor. This is where we run the Costa Rica camp. Uh, part of the crew is here. We, we actually postponed our morning session uh, to later so we can do this live. So some of the people are here, some of them are surfing and some of them are hanging out by the pool, soaking in the sun. Uh, but we're open area, so there's sometimes traffic. There's nothing we can do about it. Well, we, theoretically we could. We could come out and ask them to detour, but we're not important enough. So we're going to stand up, guys. So how do you stand up? So there's a variety of, of, of ways where you're going to put your hands. Uh, some people like to grab the gi real tight. I don't because I like to have my passing very similar gi or no gi. Uh, some people like to put on, on the belt. I don't. Um, me personally, I like to use either a double armpit or actually even better, one hand on the throat, one hand on the armpit. It's the same, exactly the same gi, no gi. Uh, it's very effective. So I need to lean forward and, and prop myself up. And now if I'm using the log splitter, notice what I'm doing. As soon as I pop up, I'm arching my back. And the reason for that is, so I want to bring my knee in the middle and I'm looking to split his legs. Sometimes it's going to take a little while. As his legs are starting to split, I drop. From here, I start to, do not wait because if you have high level guys, especially with longer legs, if their legs stay, stay locked, yeah, that's not easy, is they can actually sweep you from here, okay? So, as soon as I start drying hard to make sure that I get at least one leg out. And from here, I would use half guard passing, um, which we covered, I think, one of the episodes for sure, maybe two. All right, so let's look at the log splitter again. So again, guys, I'll leave it up to you where you feel comfortable putting your hands. Um, again, belt is a good place. 
Gee is a good place. I personally, like I said, I like double armpit or one on the throat. Let me adjust your mic. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Pop up. And now, I, this time I'm square. And I start arching my back to create. Guys, normally today's an Ogi episode, but we chose the Gi because the mats we have here are kind of dark gray. And man, I think they're, they're doing it on purpose, the trucks <laughs> coming by. So um, I want to, you know, for good contrast, but you can see how I'm arching my back, how it creates a space here. This is where I'm trying to get my knee. You cannot stand and play around here for too long because uh, Eugene can off balance me pretty quickly and pretty easily. So as, as soon as I pop up, so as soon as I pop up, I'm looking to place my knee and I'm arching as much as I possibly can. You can s sort of start to see my knee sort of coming through. As soon as it does, I change sort of, and I start driving. Okay, now I'm looking to control his right arm as well, because I don't want him uh, to go into sort of possible leg entries. Um, and I'm also either going to control the head or the arm, either under the arm or the head. So as soon as I drive, okay, now I'm passing half guard or three quarter guard or quarter guard or eighth guard, whatever it is. So I, I personally, when the guy just holds on to my foot, I don't consider. Yeah, for tournament purpose, purposes, it's still a guard, but in a, in a sort of self-defense scenario, you, you, basically, it's you, as you, you might as well be mounted. So that's the log splitter. The second one, I was going to yell at somebody, but apparently it's me. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we had the alarm, guys. You know we tried to start, start exactly, so we just had everything timed because there's no clock here. So, uh, yeah, my alarm kept, I thought I shut it off. Um, so now let's look at the other one. This is actually my preferred method to pass the closed guard. Uh, in this case, I tried to stand up staggered. Let's. So I'm changing it up for Eugene. All right, so. Normally, I, if, 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 if I'm passing to my right, the right leg will be forward. I'm going to be passing to my left this time. So, so, so what I'm doing is I'm pinching hips. You can see how the spine misaligns. Now, so you can see how, but he can make that quick adjustment. So at, before he makes that adjustment, I start to open his legs. Guys, make sure if you're opening the legs, don't do this, okay? Elbows in, start, and then from here, it's, it's you know, once the legs are open, I usually try to lead forward. This is the biggest mistake people make. They try to grab the foot and, th no, look at the ceiling. Don't even look at him. I'm probably gonna crush your mic, I told you this. From here, this is an extremely dominant pass, okay? so. You can pass over under, you can cut a knee cut. I like this way because it's extremely dominant. It, it does, I, I, you have no idea when I teach this guard pass, how many times I'm yelling at my students, look at the ceiling, look at the ceiling. How many times you heard me say, look at the ceiling and you're still looking at him. Don't look at him, you know exactly where he is. Look at the ceiling. That's the key to passing this go this way. So, again, so I pop up, but misaligned. I'm starting to, as soon as I pop up, open the legs. As soon as the legs are open, look at the ceiling. Drive with your knee. So my hips and my legs are controlling his hips. My hands are not doing a whole lot. Once his leg slips, if it stays hooked, all you got to do is lift. raise your arm. And I drive heavy with this knee. So as I'm coming through, a lot of times his arm is going to be trapped under my knee. So right now, this is not just your average guard pass or average top side control. But from here, I have a lot of submissions, you know, possibilities. 
So guys, when you, when you get top side control, there's different types of side control. There's some very dominant ones. And there's some, yeah, it's okay, you got your points or your top side control, but it's not the guy's in decent defensive position. So this one is, especially if you do it this way. Again, if, if you don't, you, you have the option going over under, you can do the knee cut. This is the most dominant way to pass, but you have to look at the ceiling. Hips forward, look at the ceiling. Guaranteed, if you screw it up, it's because you didn't look at the ceiling. So what happens is, watch my hips. When you look, when I'm, so I'm staggered. When I'm looking at, at him, this is what happens to your hips. I try to bring him down. This is the max I can do. Or is it? If I'm looking at him, my hips, my posture is almost naturally broken. Look at the ceiling. That's how you get good posture. And my posture normally sucks, naturally. So, one more time, please. So again, strip his grips, whatever he's doing, just make sure you get, get rid of them. Place your hands. Again, I like to go under the armpit, on the neck. This is legal. It's not legal as a choke in most tournaments, but it's legal to just stand up. Pop up, staggered. Stand up, good posture. Start to, oh, as soon as his legs open, I start driving. I look at the ceiling, I know exactly where he is. And I drive. This is extremely dominant, guys. Eugene, can you attest to that? Yeah. And you might see that. So, that's how you open the closed guard. Do we have check-ins, especially for Mike? He's still sleeping. Or he's too embarrassed because the weather in Texas sucks. <laughs> One. No, no, he's exactly the same time as us. Exactly the same time as us right now. Yeah. Put him in split guard and finish him. So, I'm a big fan of, of this grip, right? So, the problem with it, with the butterfly, is your, your only, no, it's not the only option, but pretty much, mo, uh, pretty much the only option is as the guy feels the pain, he drives his weight forward, and I sweep. If I cannot sweep, you run out of steam. So, I prefer the split guard because I have the finish, and I have the sweep. But look at the sweep, look at the position that I wind up in if I hit this sweep. I'm pretty sure that I, there's an immediate follow-up submission. So, when you're in that position, I tend to, this is why I favor split guard versus butterfly versus clamp guard versus other forms of guard. That is my number one preferred guard because literally I hit him with submission attempt and either it succeeds or it leads to a sweep. So if you, if you hit it well, initial, the, that initial attack, if it's a good attack, it's either an immediate sweep or immediate submission. And they will sweep themselves for you. You don't have to do the work. That's the biggest problem. Like a lot of times, you know, say, you know, spider guard and stuff, you kind of trying to get the guy and, you know, he's, you know, trying to. Go ahead, stand up again. This is it. I either got the sub, tap, or the only way to save himself is I don't have to lift. I just follow him. He sweeps himself into tap. another one of my submissions. So I'm a big fan of attacks where the guy pretty much literally sweeps himself. Omoplata is, is, is one of those attacks. Omoplata is... You know, a lot of people look at it as purely submission. So I, I, I digress a little bit, but people look at submissions as a little bit too black and white. I hit the submission, 
they fail, and now they're bottom side control. I look at submissions, especially, uh, especially good attempts. For a good attempt, you need technique and t good timing. As, as broader, Some, you, we should expect more from them. And a lot of the, my game that I play, a lot of the techniques that I use, a lot of the sequences I use, directly follow that link is I have a higher expectations for my submissions. They should either lead to a quick submission or improving my position. Not like, oh crap, I tried a triangle, but now I'm battling for bottom side control. No. If he squashes that submission, they will sweep themselves for you. Becomes an easy sweep because this is the escape of a worse outcome for them, which is a submission. So that's sort of everything goes that way. So basically, I use uh, shoulder crunch, I, I, Udegatame, uh, Razor Armbar. Um, basically, if you put them in split guard versus butterfly guard, your options dramatically change uh, to the better for you. So instead of just a sweep, you all, that, it's, it's a pretty solid submission attempt. And if, they, if you wind up with the sweep, it's because they will do it for you. That's a way to save themselves from that. So that'd be my recommendation. What else we got? How does pass the Oh, well, it depends. I like, st I like standing. So my butterfly guard is, so I, I usually, I generally don't want to have, especially, you know, I'm not the biggest guy in the room. I'm not the smallest guy, but I don't, I don't like to be here where I am on my knees. So um, there's almost two different philosophies. So you got guys that are good wrestlers that have a good base when the guy sits up and tries to do something, they just kind of battle, battle them back down occasionally, <laughs> accidentally. Uh, and, and they kind of sit low and wide. So this is a good approach if you have a good base and you believe in this, but it's a relatively passive game. If you know anything about my game, you know it's not passive. So if, if, I, if, if I start to play this defensive position, if I were Eugene, I'd pop up. Yeah, and, and I'd like, shit. I'd rather take a wrestler down like this than, than uh, sort of trying to take him down standing because it's probably you're going to have a lot better success rate with this. So anytime I feel the guy just kind of pushing me down, you know, this is happening. If I'm in Eugene's position, yeah, like now I have to make it. I either give up position or a lot of times what happens is the guy, so notice that my posture is not yet broken, but I either have to give up position, meaning go, I go to my back, or I try to prevail, and yeah, and it's, I start to expose myself to something even worse. Let me show you what I would have done. So, just play the, yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you understand? So, it, it, I will either succeed to get on top or he will expose his arm or his neck immediately. So long story short, I don't like to, pa to, to defend butterfly guard on my knees. Again, I'm not saying that's a bad way, but you're going to have, by the laws of physics, the lower you, your, your center of gravity is, the harder time the guy is going to have sweeping you. So this is a good sort of good, good position, open your knees wide, you know, try to push him down, make sure he doesn't get underneath you, break your posture. Uh, but that is not my, my way. That's, I don't like to do things that way. So if I see a guy that's a favorite butterfly guard, understand, guys, this puts me at a greater risk for leg locks. But I'm generally speaking pretty comfortable defending leg locks. So you will have to, if you do this, you have to, the, the passing is relatively simple, but you need to develop a pretty decent leg lock defense. So, I'm done. So, basically, what I do is if, if the guy plays a butterfly guard, is so in it, right now I'm not committed. I'm just sort of like, you know, pondering what I'm going to do with it. Usually, with butterfly guard, it's, it's kind of hard to go all the way around. Yeah, you could kind of you know, post them with the star, star pass. I don't use it, because if, if, if the guy starts to attack my arm that I'm posting on, first of all, that arm could 
hurt quite a bit, but more importantly, it's a scramble where I might land with my hips, hip bone on his eye socket and stuff. So I don't use a thought pass, but you could do that. But usually what I do is as soon as I, and I'm, go, I'm going in. So I usually go one in and from here, okay, let's play deep half guard. By the way, we covered, yeah, yeah we covered that in last, last episode. All right, so now Eugene has a dilemma. Okay, if he holds on to this, I'm gonna cry and go him. So a lot of times the guy's like, crap. Yeah, this is, this is a very common response. So I'm okay. We covered a lot of hard, uh, deep half guard attacks from the top last week. So I'm comfortable there. As long as I, I basically just go in, he can keep the one leg. I isolate his head and arm. But anytime again, let's look at it from a butterfly perspective. So basically I just wanna, yeah. Once I make a decision to go in, either knee cut, knee cut, leg pummel, or just kick out. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> so Eugene, ha no, 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 keep it, keep it. So Eugene has kind of a spider guard last ditch effort, which he can keep because as soon as he starts pushing, I let go, that, that's gonna come off. Um, so anytime I see somebody with a butterfly guard, I generally go in, one leg in, the options are knee cut to the left, knee cut to the right, leg pummel, or just kick out. And I just uh, sequence them in a way that makes the most sense depending on how the guy's defending. And usually I can pass, usually pretty quickly. We covered that a few few months ago. Yeah, you have to. You basically have to give something up. Now, but yeah, uh, go go high mount escape, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna come up. If not, I'll cover it. In, I'll cover it in Nogi class next week. Um, so that way, so you know, just do this search high mount escape. We covered it a few months ago. Uh, if you can't find your answer, uh, then uh, we'll cover it next uh, next time. How to get to Costa Rica quickly <laughs> before the camp ends <laughs> or Sicily? Uh, he's asking if you can't go through with an anaconda setup. Oh, okay, yeah, that's that's a good question. It's one of my favorite sequences, uh, sort of arming guillotine. With, with the gi, I tend to go with arming guillotine straight into anaconda. Um, with no with no gi, I tend to go no arm guillotine straight to anaconda. So it's one of my favorite sequences um so um oh, so, yeah you're not gonna be there i have to break you down all right so i broke you, you came down to turtle so um when i when i get to this position i'm basically in a position to anaconda him so this is one of the one of the ones that especially the guy goes off of a shot sometimes he's reaching so i try to make if he's reaching i'm trying to make him reach for the leg this, this, this is where Eugene is strong. This is where he becomes weak. So, I, here he can complete the takedown, but that's okay because I will complete the anaconda. Um, so, once he's here, I'm going to basically almost let him finish. And as he's driving forward, I drop him to the side. Usually, if he holds on to my leg, that's okay. I can lock it up. I will try to kick it out. If I can kick it out, great. But if I cannot kick it out, that's okay too. I just feed things in a way that makes sense. So right now, he's holding on to my leg. He's not in a position to defend the anaconda. Notice how I move his arm the way, if, how I move my leg. So if you got a guy that's pretty broad, this is where they're broader. It's gonna be harder for you to lock it up than take it away so you stretch out his arm now the anaconda is locked up and from here I, I will generally use my leg 
decompress. So I don't chase him. I don't run after him. I don't chase him. So that's one setup because you got guys that are, if they start to stretch the arms. Now, if they, they go for shoot and they don't, they, so what I want to do is, there's two different ways I can go. I can, I can roll to my right or I can roll to my left. It, it depends on how he's, how he's dealing with the headlock position that I have on him. So this time I'm going to go in. I roll over if you notice. Outside the ice. I know I Or am I? You get stuck. I just literally move my leg in the position because he's holding on to it. He's going to fall. And now I'm no longer stuck. So you have to, don't, don't just remember sort of the specific move. You get stuck. There's other ways to complete that movement. And all you do is move your limbs in a certain direction. They will follow. So, you, so this time I'm going to roll. Make sure, guys, if you're going to do the roll through, if you, I can go to the left to the right. To my left is shorter, but Eugene, the way he's positioned, um, it's it may not happen because he's leaning. So if I'm going to do all the way roll through, or I can bring up the other leg, Eugene. Yeah. Now I'm not going to. I'm not going to get it done. I'm not going to roll to my left, so I have to go to my right. So that's your head in. Underneath his torso. This way he has to get stuck, but I just move my body in the direction that I want him to go. Get my leg into play immediately. Lock up the anaconda. So, there's, uh, that's some of the setups that I use for anaconda. Uh, it is one of my favorite submissions, like especially it's a really good one combining it with arming or no arming guillotines. Gu uh, guillotine to anaconda is some of the, some of the easiest uh, combinations or transitions you're going to make. When the guy defends one, you switch to the other. We have three minutes. What, are the, what other questions we have? The Mar Brothers gang did not ask, ask their questions. I told you guys, you guys. So guys, you know, if you've been watching for a while, you know that I treat this like a, literally like a, a, a class. Some of you are not here in person, but you're here virtually. And some of you are here in person. You, to, you can ask questions just like everybody else. Go ahead. From uh, collar and sleeve, do you understand? Yeah, from, from like a butterfly guard, yeah. uh, a spider guard? Yeah, like. So first thing I need to make sure is your posture is low. Anytime somebody has the collar and sleeve, you need to work. Your posture is the most important thing. If you try to pass guard, not, you're going to get launched. So first thing is make sure you try to regain as much posture as, as possible. Now, there's two different things. I'm not, it's going to be almost impossible for me to strip his grips with my hands because the way he, like he literally, he has four grips, I have none. If you let somebody get four grips and you have none, that's a major problem. So I will now make his grips irrelevant. And I'm in charge. So let's look at the steps again. This is very important. We covered this probably a month, a month or two ago is when you're passing somebody's guard and in converse works for the guy on the bottom. You need to, you know, especially if he gets more grips, you know, you should not let somebody get four grips and you have zero. That's like, I just did it for Eugene for, that's like basically, I would do that to a blue belt that doesn't know anything and just like, all right, let's see what you got. But if I'm going like live, I'm not going to, I may let him get ahead on the grips, but not four to zero, maybe two to, two to one or three to two, not four to zero. That's a big mistake because now you cannot strip so you now have to figure out which of the grips can you make irrelevant through your movement. Now, that grip, we will consider it the, the most important, the critical grip. So again, this is a big mistake already. So first thing I worry about my posture. 
second, I know I can start to push this knee down. And I start to drive. So this is critical grip for Eugene. He's losing the critical grip. I don't have, I have one grip right now, but I neutralize his critical grip. And now I'm moving forward. So at this point, he has to let go. Or he does it, 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 it this grip, this, his left leg grip and his left arm grip have become irrelevant. So if he holds on, it doesn't matter. I'm taking it out of the equation myself. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. So if I were him, I'd switch that grip. But even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Now, his grips have become irrelevant, basically means stripping the critical one. So, when you have a plan and the guy takes it away from you with giving superior grip, you have to change the plan. Okay? Um, when you change the plan, it has to sort of include sort of what is the situation. The situation he has favorable grips. So, first, lower your center of gravity to make sure you don't get immediately swept, swept, and then start to strip the critical grip first. Because once you do that, literally the other two or three grips fall, either fall away because he needs to change them, or if they don't, it, they become irrelevant. They don't, they're no longer keeping you, uh, you know, at, at a threat of, of, um, uh, of getting swept. Um, so, guys, before I, 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 we sign off, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, a, a charity in, in Costa Rica. So, um, Costa Rica is a beautiful country, but like a lot of other countries, including the U.S., there are kids that, whose families are below poverty or at poverty line, which means that some of these kids, if, they're not, if the school is not in session, they do not eat, okay? So there is a, a foundation in Hako, which is five miles, 10 kilometers away from here, beautiful spot, uh, which was founded by a jiu-jitsu guy, Leonidas Guerrero. He's a black belt. Uh, I'm gonna teach there tonight. But what he does, and this is a legitimate charity, guys. They do not take cash donation. They, they, they do take donations via credit card, PayPal, and so forth. Um, so guys, what they do is they initially started the program that's been, I think, in existence for about nine years. Um, what they do is they basically provide jiu-jitsu classes for the kids from poor families. They've expanded now to include judo, chess, meal program. So long story short, I want to make this episode as popular as we possibly can, guys, I will put the link to this foundation below this episode. So please share, please donate. And uh, what I really like about this is I wanted to have Leonidas here. Uh, unfortunately, I will see him tonight, uh, but it's to, to sort of be here in the Gi because this is a Jiu -Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu led foundation. So let's show them what kind of community we are, guys. All right. And on that note, I'm signing off. I will see you next week. Next week, we'll do no gi. <laughs>